Most music is actually really quite simple. It's just made up of chords and melodies. Chords provide the colour and the feeling, and melodies provide the narrative, which means that there are tricks that you can use to play music really easily, and one of those tricks is something called a tenth interval. And that is what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. So when you're playing chords in most kind of popular music, you're usually using something called triads. And triads are just chords that are made up of three notes. And the three notes are every other note in the scale. So if you use the scale of C major, which is just all the white notes on a piano, to make a triad, you just play every other note like this. And you can make a triad using every note in the scale. So you can make a C triad, a D, E, F, G, A, B, and then you get back to another form of C again. And if you're playing kind of any song on the piano, that tends to be the chord you'll use. You might put the C for the C chord in the left hand as well. And that is one way that you can just play any song. You find the chords for the song and you play them like that. But that only creates one kind of sound and you can very easily start to make all of the things that you play on a piano or on a guitar sound kind of the same as each other. Which brings us onto something called voicing, because now you know kind of how to make the chords, you've got 88 keys on the piano, so you can voice these chords differently, and voicing just means sort of playing them in a different way. So an example of this is if we were playing a C chord, which was C, E, and G, you don't necessarily need to play the C, the E, and the G here. You could play C, E, G, or you could play C, E, G, you could play G, E, C. These are all still versions of C chords, but you're just playing them in different ways across the piano. And a good way of describing how you are playing these notes is using something called intervals. And in music, all intervals mean is the distance between two notes. So for example, if I was to play a C and an E here, this would be called a third because it's one, two, three notes apart. This would be a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. It wouldn't really be called an eighth, it'd be called an octave, but you get the idea. And you can just keep going, and this is a way of describing the distance between the notes that you're playing. So a tenth interval would be playing ten notes apart, which would be from C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, to the next E. Now, if you remember from chords, we had C, E, G to make a C chord. So all you're doing is taking this E and playing it an octave higher. Like that. And that makes a tenth. You can also add the other missing note from the chord still in that left hand. So you've kind of just taken the note out of the middle of the chord and lifted it up an octave. And then you can move this around for all of the chords, like this. And this, to me, sounds a lot more interesting and much better than just playing... You get... It sounds a lot more wholesome and full. And there's a reason for this, and I'm not going to go into too much depth on this because I have done a video on the science of emotions in music, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. But this sounds much better because of something called the harmonic series. And essentially all this means is that when you play a single note on a piano or sing it or anything, you're actually not just hearing that note. You are hearing a series of higher pitched notes that meld together to give you a certain quality of sound. So if I play a C, I'm actually not just hearing a C. What I'm hearing is a C, and then I'm also kind of it faintly hearing a C above it, and then I'm hearing a G above that, and then I'm hearing an E above that. And this series of notes that you're actually hearing when you play one note is called the harmonic series. Now, the first three notes that you hear when you play a C in the harmonic series is a C, a G, and then an E above that. And that is why that chord sounds so good. Because when we play a single C, you're kind of already hearing these notes. So you're just kind of reinforcing the sound. And you can literally play this pattern on any of the white notes and it will work and sound really good.
If you play just the chords like that, it sounds kind of melancholy and kind of sad. But they don't just show up in that kind of character. About 10 years ago, there was a surge in kind of pop songs using this with a very specific rhythm. So if we play the C version of this, but I take out the G, so we just have the 10th, and then play this rhythm. And then move that around, then you get literally every 2010 song in the pop charts. So it's kind of the basis for every song, and it doesn't necessarily have to be on the piano. The song Blackbird by The Beatles is kind of based around this exact idea. All of that is just built around the idea of playing tense on the guitar. There is lots of kind of small tricks like that that make songs sound much better and one of those tricks is using something called a 5-7-B chord and in this video I explain exactly what that is and how to use it. So if you're interested in that, head on through and I will see you there.